Hello everybody, Road Warrior 627 here and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Obviously, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I used to do gaming videos all the time and horse racing previews. This year, uh, 2020, I've just been doing racing. But I got a little bit of a request last week to give away some details of a Minecraft racetrack I built five years ago on the Xbox One. I actually uploaded a tour of that racetrack. It was awful. That was back when I had a high screechy voice. The video was recorded during Minecraft Rain, because obviously back then I did not care. I didn't care about how people viewed my videos, I just wanted to do it. Well, a couple years later I did a live tour of the racetrack I built here on PS4, which is the same one we're going to be viewing today with my friend Twisted Storm Plays. But it was kind of rushed, and uh, also, even before that, I did a starting gate tutorial back when I had that high screechy voice. And uh, that got a lot of views, but a lot of people couldn't stand my voice. So I decided that I'm going to redo the racetrack tour, and I'm going to redo the starting gate tutorial today. So I hope you guys enjoy the following. Nothing in this video is going to be edited. It's just going to be a straight run through. So please pardon if I stumble over my words at all. So you can see we're beginning the day at the... Hometown diner that has been taken over by sheep. This is the best world I ever built. It's a super flat, creative world. I built a diner. I built, obviously, the racetrack. You can see the length of the grandstand from here. I built a mini golf course. I built two baseball stadiums, one a lot bigger than the other. I built a small football stadium. I've been working on a hockey rink for about a year on and off that I essentially just started. There's an apartment building back there, but the main thing we're trying to focus on today is the racetrack. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the subway over to the front side of the racetrack where the backyard begins. Now, the subway system I built in this world, it's not very complicated, but I did decide to name it after actual subway lines here in New York City, where I'm from. So let's just grab a minecart, and we'll head on over to the entrance to the track. You can also go in this way. If you follow here, you can see Trains to Mine Horse Park. That is what the track is named. You can see the end of the grandstand near the top of the stretch right there. But we're going to be going towards the front, because I'd like to show you the backyard first. So we're going to do the backyard, we're going to show you the interior of the building, we're going to show you the racetrack, and then at the end we'll have the starting gate tutorial. If you do not want to watch the whole video, that's fine, I'm going to have timestamps to each of the different parts of the video in the description. I don't know why I left such a big space between power rails here. And the game's glitching. I mentioned that the game, ever since it went to the Bedrock Edition, kind of screwed up some of the signs and paintings. Obviously, if you've played Minecraft, you know I'm using the City Texture Pack. Which has paintings that look like TVs, and obviously you need TVs in a racetrack for people to watch the races. And it also changed some of the signs from having them center-oriented to having the text all the way at the top of the sign. So we're coming out of the station now, and we're heading to Mine Horse Park. And this is the main entrance. If you watched the PS4 video from years ago, things haven't changed that much. If you watched the Xbox video from five years ago, things have changed significantly. This racetrack is based off of my favorite place in the world, which is Belmont Park which is our biggest racetrack here in New York. It's on the Queens-Nassau County border, and it's home of the Belmont Stakes, which is the last leg of the Triple Crown in a conventional year. It wasn't this year, but that was just because of coronavirus. I don't, I don't want to get into my feelings about that, but 
Let's just say they're not very good. This is the entrance. There's tons of admission gates to the right, to the left, and in the center to expedite the process of entering. Obviously, this is Minecraft. I built this thing just because I wanted to. We've done little competitions, little races between me and my friends on occasion, but years and years ago, we haven't done anything recently. Over here is the ticket booth where you can buy tickets to get in. Regular admission is just five bucks. You don't need to get a ticket. You just go right in. If you want to sit on the second floor, reserve seats are twelve bucks. Third floor, reserve seats are ten bucks. Boxes, twenty bucks a person. Those are right near the finish line on the second floor. And then we have the picnic tables near the top of the stretch on the apron that we'll show you later on in the video. And you can also reserve seats in the restaurant, the Garden Terrace, which is the same exact name, actually, as the restaurant on the third floor at Belmont in real life. So let's head inside. Fans are welcome to sit in any unsold reserve seat, unlike pretty much any sporting venue you've ever encountered. So this is a little bit of a directory guide of where to go. If you know about racetracks, the grandstand when you walk in is on the left, to the left of the finish line, and the clubhouse is typically to the right of the finish line. Now this racetrack is loosely based off of Belmont Park. I don't want you to think I was trying to create an exact replica. I was just trying to use it as a general guide. The track dimensions are similar not completely the same and the back exactly the same there is a duck pond over this way just like Belmont has Belmont it's a little bit closer to the front over here it's to the side as you can see this is Minecraft so we have other animals in here too these are just chickens but they're the closest thing to ducks and they kinda look like ducks in the city texture pack so this is the grandstand side of the backyard. Very simple. You have places to sit down and watch the races. Those are the TV paintings that I was telling you about. These are just betting windows to put your bets in in the backyard. You have more TVs over here where people could sit out back and watch the races on the TV, whether it be from here or simulcasting from another track. Here's a bigger TV. Here's a nice wide open area where people could set up picnics, tables, whatever they want to do, just like you can at Belmont. And this is the festival tent. Very simple. I wasn't going for anything here. I just wanted to put it in. Very simple concept, the backyard at Belmont. While some of it has been taken away, unfortunately, by the Islanders Arena, I'm doing much less here, or I did much less here, than really has at Belmont. You can see the weeds or as I like to call it the ivy covering the grandstand is similar. Belmont's exterior on the backyard side is largely brick. This is just stone. I just thought it fit better. And this is where you can buy t-shirts and programs for the day's races whether it be pocket programs or big uh, past performance programs daily racing form as well which they charge an arm and a leg for in real life let's go to the middle now this is the paddock this is where the hat uh, the horses are saddled before each race this is nowhere near as similar as it is at Belmont there's the secretariat statue at Belmont in the middle there's a whole lot more space I just put the big tree at Belmont, it's a big Japanese white pine. Here, it's just an oak tree with little white flowers trying to resemble carnations, which are the colors of Belmont. Those are the saddling stalls. Got the colors for number one, two, three, four, five, six. That's about as much room as my racetrack can tolerate, six horses. And here, this is also dissimilar from Belmont. You have some TVs back here behind the paddock. Again, just a very general thing we're going after here. This is the clubhouse side of the backyard, which, like at Belmont, is not as big as the grandstand side. Just more bedding uh, terminals. You've got snack bar, 
and you've got a culinary tent. I know there's a tent on the clubhouse side at Belmont. I don't usually go over there, but they have some sort of other tent besides the festival tent over here. So I put a large tent in where on big days this would be set up for people to do uh, things like sample exotic food. Nothing I would ever do at the racetrack, but people do it on big days like Belmont Stakes Day and other big days like Stars and Stripes Day, which is typically around the 4th of July. So we're going to be tackling the areas for the betters first, the fans, and then we're going to show off the racetrack itself. Although you will be able to see the racetrack very soon. So we're going to do this floor by floor for the fans. Obviously, again, this is the grandstand on the left side. The clubhouse is on the right side. So let's walk in to the first floor. The inside of the grandstand, there's not much to talk about. There's betting terminals. This would be where live tellers are taking bets. Plenty of seating right out here. Here's your first glimpse of the actual racetrack through the glass. TVs up here. There's TVs all over the place, whether it be carrying Mine Horse Park or other tracks. Now here's the thing I was telling you about the paintings. Those are safes. Those are meant to be TVs. So I guess I'll go and change those. But when Minecraft changed over, it kind of screwed up all of the signs and paintings, as I told you before. You can see there the refreshments are meant to be in the middle. They're actually on top. Not a big deal. Your snack bar. And here, just like at Belmont, there's a separation in the grandstand between the main part and the far side of the grandstand past the 16th pole at Belmont this is all open just like here on the apron side those are meant to be more TVs and that that uh, goes all the way down these bedding windows to the end of the grandstand and down here is the subway entrance to the track this is exactly leading from the other direction that I showed you before. You would come in this way. You can still buy tickets here. It's just that you're underground before you come out into the bulk of the racetrack. This is trying to resemble the Long Island Railroad Terminal, but I decided to do it a little bit differently. Instead of going off the second floor, I decided to have it going off the first floor underground. To me, it just made a little bit more sense. Here's the grandstand apron. Here on the first floor, these are the picnic tables I told you about. These resemble the picnic tables at Belmont. So you can book these in advance for a $40 deposit, as well as a certain amount per person. And you could spend all day down here watching the races. Another key difference between this track and Belmont is the TV studios. The TV studio at Belmont is usually where I sit, up on the third floor. Here I have one adjacent to the track, right by the eighth pole. And then I have one on the roof that I'll show you later. So here's the grandstand apron, plenty of seating. And here is where you could say all the magic happens. This is the finish line of the track. We're going to dive into the track much more later in the video, but as you can see, the dimensions of the track, the main track is a mile and a half around, just like Belmont. The turf courses are about a sixteenth of a mile shorter each than they are at Belmont. The outer turf course here, which is the Widener turf course at Belmont, is a mile and a quarter here. At Belmont, it's a mile and five sixteenths and 27 feet. The inner turf course here is a mile and an eighth. At Belmont, it's a mile and three sixteenths plus 103 feet. So you can see the main track. Then inside of that is the outer turf course or the widener. And then the inner turf course inside of that one. There's the tote boards. We'll show you those later. But let's go inside. Actually, before that, here's the trophy presentation stand and the winner's circle. Obviously a lot smaller than it is at Belmont. This is the horse path where the horses come out before the race. Let's Now let's go back inside and go over to the clubhouse. Now, 
The clubhouse and the grandstand are not completely different. They're a little bit different from each other at Belmont, but not that significantly. I guess you could say the clubhouse is a little bit nicer. It's not that big of a difference, though. These are just some names I put up there. Famous horsemen. And one of the coolest things, just like at Belmont, on the first floor, if you want to go between the clubhouse and the grandstand, you actually walk along the path where the horses come out before each race. So think of all the greats that have passed through here in real life at Belmont since 1968 when the track was renovated and the horse path coming through the grandstand here. You're talking about Secretariat, Seattle Slough, a firm, spectacular bid, easy goer, cigar. All the greats of the American turf, John Henry, have passed through this tunnel. And if you really go to Belmont in real life, you can walk among where the greats have walked. Right here. So this is the clubhouse side. Not much difference, as I said. Another snack bar over here. And more betting machines. Or betting terminals. Not really betting machines. These would be for live tellers to take your bets. And now... We're going to head up to the second floor. You're not going to notice much difference. On the second floor, you've got your bedding windows. You've got another snack bar. That over there is something different. I'll show you in a minute. Here's the seating outside. Here's your first really good view of the racetrack from above. And this is the second floor clubhouse seating. So we'll move over now to this room over here. This is a special room for meetings for horsemen. This is known as the Belmont Room in real life. You can host parties in here. It's obviously a lot smaller. I just wanted to include everything that you could. I didn't try to make this anything special. The track is obviously the most important part out there. The grandstand on the second floor is very similar. Here's a little bit of a thing for the Benzeville Stakes, my equivalent of the Belmont Stakes. And there's some runner I made up from 2015 and his final time. This is where the wall of Belmont winners is in real life at Belmont as well. So I'm going to kind of breeze through here, the second floor grandstand. More bedding windows, more seating, more TVs. Another snack bar. And that goes all the way down to the end of the grandstand. Now, the box seats here at Mine Horse Park are in the same spot they are at Belmont. They're on the second floor by the finish line. You can see here where they are. This was my best job of doing box seats you have box seats for four people you have box seats for two people and they are all marked by different letters and this is about as middle as you get here's the finish line so you have a pretty good distribution between clubhouse and grandstand box seats and that's where the regular seating begins again all the way down to the end of the grandstand give you a little bit of a view right on the finish line here from the second floor by the way that's my uh, baseball stadium that I also gave a tour of a few years ago let's go back inside and now we'll go up to the third floor this is where things get slightly different but remain fairly similar third floor at Belmont is all open air on the grandstand side so you can see there's no doors to go outside you just simply walk down these are bedding windows that go all the way down to the end I'm not gonna bore you with that over here is a very small rendition of the Heritage Club restaurant which is the food court on the third floor at Belmont Obviously, if you've been to the Heritage Club at Belmont, this is a lot smaller. I just wanted to include it. My main flaw with this track is very simple. 
I didn't make it wide enough. I believe it's only 22 blocks from front to back. It should probably be around 50. So that makes the grandstand look a lot narrower than it should, looking from the side. Here's some self-betting machines over here. Personal handicapping terminals, if you want to call them that. So here's what I was telling you about the width of the racetrack this way from here to here. It should be a lot wider, and it should probably be offset more from the track. But I did this a long time ago. I'm not changing it now. Let's go back in the third floor. The third floor clubhouse at Belmont, there are doors to go outside, but here I just left it open air to keep it consistent with the rest of the third floor. Now let's show you the top tier seating here at Belmont. Actually, first, yeah, let me just show you something special. If you ever go to Belmont in real life and you're wondering where you should sit, the answer is right here. Come up the rightmost escalator on the grandstand side and sit right on the finish line on the third floor. These are in real life the best seats at any sporting venue you could possibly imagine. You could see the entire racetrack. There's no posts in your way and you can simply get here just by paying the five dollars to get in unless it's Belmont Stakes Day. On more crowded days you might want to get here a little bit early but chances are there's still room. If you are a horse racing fan and you're going to Belmont next year, hopefully, please, freaking Governor Cuomo, when it reopens, do yourself a favor and sit here. These will be the best seats you'll ever have at any sporting venue. And you don't even have to pay any more than just to get in to the track. Alright. So, at Belmont, we have stairs along the whole length except for the garden terrace which I'll show you soon stairs going left and right up to the third floor upper tier seating I didn't really have room for that here because I made the grandstand so narrow so I just put one staircase on both sides leading to the clubhouse upper tier seating I'll show you this in a second as well so here's the clubhouse upper tier seating this is known as 3U at Belmont. It's also known as 3U here. This goes to where the Garden Terrace restaurant starts. So this gets you even higher. At Belmont, there's posts that come up and down here and kind of block your view. Not here. It's probably the only bad thing about Belmont is the third floor upper tier seatings. seating has posts. This is a little bit of a racing office. The executive lounge. I don't know why I did this, but it also connects out here. If you run along the whole length of this, you can go up the stairs to another TV studio on top of the racetrack near the finish line, just to the right of the finish line on the clubhouse side. So let's go back down here and we'll show you the grandstand upper tier seating which is a lot longer because the grandstand is bigger. But before we do that let's show you the garden terrace since we're going in order here. This is also a lot smaller than Belmont but I just wanted to include some version of it. see my best impression of doing jockey silks using Minecraft and you've got a buffet here just like you do at the real garden terrace at the real garden terrace there would be tiered seating here is just one level of seating and if you get these tables you'll have a great view of the racetrack through the windows so that's how you get into the kitchen but there's a special entrance here to the executive area of the racetrack. This goes up even higher. Here's a little bit of a free brewing stand for you. 
this is where you have your camera operators that can have a view of the racetrack but most importantly they're looking at the TVs this is the stewards area in here where the stewards post their inquiries if there was interference during a race they call the jockeys from here they want uh, two of them watch the race live and the third one watches it on the TV I won't say anything more about the Naira stewards because they won't like what I have to say and this next door is the announcers booth this is obviously right on the finish line as it should be and you have a great view of the racetrack at Belmont in real life this is 94 feet above the ground let's go back downstairs so this is the third floor grandstand you've just got tons and tons of betting machines here with more seating that way this number here is the capacity of the seating per floor just as a reference so I actually want to know how many people could actually fit in here I think it's about 1300 as far as reserve seats and I estimate about 3000 for total capacity Belmont of course that's 32,000 and 90,000. Here's the grandstand upper tier seating. This is where I usually sit for the Belmont Stakes. I buy the cheapest reserve seats possible and sit way up here. You'd have posts coming down here, but we don't have that here. I didn't feel it necessary to hamper the view for no reason. So this goes all the way down to the garden terrace. All right, so before we move on to the track itself, I'd like to give you some numbers about the grandstand, and I'll come out this way and let you have a bigger look at it. I have about a half an hour remaining on this tour. I think we'll be able to get through it and do the starting gate tutorial at the end. Here's the numbers for the grandstand. It's 172 blocks long. I told you it's 22 lengths front to back as far as the depth looking from this angle. The heights of the floors are 9 blocks, 8 blocks, 5 blocks, and then another 9 to the overhang. So that's a total of 31. And those are the numbers for the track. Definitely the best... Well, this whole thing is the best thing I ever built in Minecraft, and it's not even close. If you're wondering what this little green area is down here, this is at Belmont. I don't know why it's here. I know a lot of kids like to usually toss around football or baseball down here, so I left that area intact here. This is the barn area. Just like it is at Belmont, it's to the right. If you're looking out towards the racetrack to the east of the clubhouse. These are some names of horses I made over the years. So let's just take one. And we'll show you the process of bringing a horse over. I'll just ride the horse. Obviously, they typically be led over with a lead. This is the walk to the paddock where the horse would typically be saddled. Go under that path and this is the paddock where the horse would be saddled. Then they'd be let out, walked around the circle once, and let out to the track. But before we do that, I'm going to show you my very small jockey's room that I built here at Belmont. It's in the exact same location as it really is at Belmont. 
These are some names of some regular New York jockeys. Some of them are Hall of Famers. Most of them are soon to be Hall of Famers. And if not, they're really good jockeys regardless. This is the shower and the jacuzzi where some jockeys would try to lose weight to make weight for the races. Obviously, jockeys cannot weigh too heavy. Over here is a little underground tunnel system I built. This is just a little thing that goes back to the backyard. Why did I build it? Because I could. And then that goes out to the infield of the racetrack. So now we're going to show you the racetrack itself. This is obviously the most important part of the whole thing. Because this is where all the action happens. So let's take our horse. If I can find him, where did he go? I don't know. Guess we'll have to find him later. Maybe he walked, did he walk down here? Maybe he walked this way and went into the... Yep, there he is. If this happens in real life, folks, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're screwed. That's all I can say. All right, so here is the entrance to the track. It's a little bit to the right of the finish line, just like it is at Belmont. Here's the wire for the main track, the outer turf course, and the inner turf course. So now we're going to go around each track as the horses would, counterclockwise. We said this is the finish line, my best recreation of the Belmont Park with the black and white checkers coming down to the finish. So each of these white poles is for a sixteenth of a mile. The black and white poles are for an eighth of a mile, and the red and white poles denote a quarter of a mile. So that would be the mile and three-eighths pole, meaning if you're going around, there's a mile and three-eighths left. This shoot does not exist at Belmont. This is a mile and a quarter shoot that I built. Goes straight out onto the turn. At Belmont, in reality, the race is started on the turn for a mile and a quarter. So here's your mile and an eighth pole. And the mile pole, the red and white pole back there, meaning there's a mile to the finish. This is about the same shoot as the one at Belmont, it allows races on the main track to be run to a mile and an eighth. This is where this year's fake Belmont Stakes was started in real life. As you can see, this is a main street of my town, the training track. If you know Belmont, does not exist here in my world. This is where the training track would extend this way and around like that. I did not build that here. So let's keep going down the back stretch. If you're wondering what these things are, these are just meant to be cameras to provide head-on shots of the turn and the back stretch. This would more provide the head-on shot of the clubhouse turn uh, and a rear shot of the back stretch, obviously, as the horses would be going this way. So that's seven furlongs to go, or seven eighths of a mile. Six furlongs to go. Five, and then we move into the far turn. Half a mile, or four furlongs. Three eighths of a mile. And then this is the quarter pole. This is the top of the stretch right here. This also does not exist at Belmont. This is a, sh a little bit of a shoot that allows mile and three quarter races to be run. You can see my starting gate. I'm going to give you that tutorial right at the end of the video. Timestamps, as I said, are available. The 3 sixteenths pole. You have these little metal posts at Belmont. I don't know what they're for, but I incorporated them in here. Here's the eighth pole. This is one furlong to go. And then the sixteenth pole. This is the secretariat 
31 length pole. Obviously, with Minecraft horses, 31 of these would extend from the finish line way past this. But I was just simply trying to recreate Belmont. You can see the number 31 here. 31 lengths is 279 feet. That's how much Secretariat won the 1973 Belmont Stakes by. And then you've got the indication here that you're approaching the wire. And here's the wire. Next is the outer turf course at Belmont. This is a mile and 5 16ths, 27 feet. Here it's a mile and a quarter. This is a little auxiliary finish line here. That This does not exist at Belmont either, but it simply allows seven furlong turf sprints to be run. And I'll show you that in more detail in a second. So this would be a mile and an eighth to go. You can see the different colored poles I use. These dark oak things on the pole indicate eighth poles. The lighter acacia ones are for quarter poles. And then, oh no, those are birch, excuse me. These are birch. These are acacia in the middle here. Those are poles for the outer turf course. And then the spruce are poles for the inner turf course. So these try to repli replicate black at Belmont. These try to replicate yellow. These replicate red for quarter poles, and these replicate blue for the inner turf course. That goes for any Naira track, not just Belmont. Here's one of the shoots on the clubhouse turn. This would be your mile and a sixteenth shoot on the inner turf course at Belmont. Instead, it's a mile and a sixteenth on the outer turf course here, meaning they can go this way, or it's a mile on the inner turf course, meaning they go this way. As you can see, like I said, we're a sixteenth of a mile behind. This is your mile and a sixteenth Widener turf shoot at Belmont. Here it's a mile on the outer or the Widener. This shoot would be the mile shoot on the Widener at Belmont. Here it's seven and a half furlongs. Kind of a distance that's hardly ever run in American. It doesn't exist at all at Belmont. This is my seven furlong shoot for the Widener or the outer turf. As you can see it comes up a little bit short here if you extend this here. A sixteenth of a mile on the straightaways at this racetrack, if you're trying to recreate it, is 33 blocks. Now, as you can see, this here to here is a sixteenth of a mile. There's no way that's 33 blocks. Well, that's simply because when you're going around a turn, things are different. I think the math is you would have 33 over radical 2, square root of 2, if you use the Pythagorean theorem to find what it really should be. But I didn't have the room, so I just made it a little bit tighter around the turns. This is not trying to be totally realistic. We're just trying to have fun here. So you can see the spacing of the poles on the turf courses is not great, but it's certainly not the worst it could be either. They're not right on top of each other on the turns. So this goes down the back stretch. That's six furlongs to go on the outer. Five. Half a mile to go. Or fur, four furlongs. You can see all the animals here that would not exist in real life. Three-eighths of a mile. Quarter of a mile top of the stretch. Three-sixteenths. Eighth pole. Sixteenth pole. And the wire. You can see these little marks. These are exclusively for seven furlong races. Remember, this does not actually happen at Belmont in real life. This was just because I needed to run seven furlong races so they would not go to the regular wire here. They would go to this auxiliary one over here. Then finally we have the inner turf course which is a mile and an eighth here and a mile and three sixteenths plus 103 feet in real life. The only shoot that applies to it is this one that I showed you already that allows mile races to be run on the inner turf. They would cross over the outer or the widener and run straight onto the inner turf course. So that's a mile left, seven furlongs, six furlongs, and you can go down the whole list, five, 
four, which is a half a mile. This also is not accurate. The far turn starts at the half mile pole on the inner turf course at Belmont. Here it starts between the seven sixteenths pole and the three eighths pole. But the turns are so tight here on the inner, it's just the way it is. There's a quarter of a mile, three sixteenths, one eighth, sixteenth, and the wire there. The interior here, we have our American flag. We have the pond that's in real life at Belmont. Trees as there are at Belmont. This is my fake triple crown that I created with the winner I told you about earlier. And these are the real triple crown winners at Belmont. This takes the place of the individual wooden signs that you would see at Belmont. Here is the little mine horse park thing as there is at Belmont Park in real life. Here's a tote board. This would be a screen. This uh, excuse me, displays race number, minutes to post, post time, portable rail positions, the time of day, conditions of the track and the turf, temperature, the odds on all the horses, if there's an inquiry or an objection, and here's the little New York thing that they have at Belmont I tried to recreate here with the different colors. There's the wire on the inner turf course. This board shows the results. Total pulls, who finished first, second, and third. Win prices, place prices, and show prices. Payouts for the exacta, triple, super, daily double, pick three, pick four, pick five, and pick six at the end of the day, as well as when applicable to Grand Slam. This little board over here displays the pick six carryover, the late pick five carryover, which is a lot rarer, and this board displays the races that would apply to those multi-race wagers, pick four, pick five, and the pick six. So that is the racetrack in a nutshell. Remember, if you are trying to recreate this, and the only reason I'm saying this is because this was requested... by Pazzi for Mile Wifey. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And thank you for leaving the positive comments again on my really old bad video. Hopefully this one is indeed better. 33 blocks from pole to pole every 16th of a mile. That of course means 66 blocks every furlong. This is not accurate. Because every block in Minecraft is one meter. That would mean it's just 33 meters from here to here. Let's say a meter is about a yard. So that would just be 33 yards. In real life, a sixteenth of a mile is 110 yards. So keep that in mind. But Minecraft, there's no way I was going to build that big of a racetrack. And there's no way you'd be able to see the whole thing either. I think this is a good scaled version. All right, so we still have a little bit of time left. I guess I'll show you some of the finer points of the track itself. You can see the flowers I tried to make it look a little nice. But let's show you around the turns here. I just tried to keep everything on a 45-degree angle. I wasn't trying to make it a complete circular turn like they are in real life at any given racetrack. This just felt a little bit easier. And it felt something that I could keep more consistent. So you're really only turning a couple of times. Is it four times in total? Yeah, so if you go into the turn here, you turn once, you'd run straight. you turn a second time, a third time. And then to come out of the turn onto the back stretch, that's a fourth time. I just go one after the other on a 45 degree angle. Now here... As you come into and out of the turns, I tried to decrease the angle a little bit. So it's not like, bam, you turn. It's more of a gradual turn there. But then again, it is not a complete circle. So just trying to ease the angle on the turns. And that applies to the main track specifically. On the turf courses, I just said, screw it. I'm not going to do that. So there that 45 degree angle going into a straightaway so it's a more abrupt turn but the 
turns are more abrupt in real life as well, even though they are indeed circular. There's that little apartment building I was telling you about. Back here, this is just kind of a straight training track that me and Sammy Roseman, also known as Sammy the Beast, were building not too long ago, I don't think. That also does not exist in real life either. So now we're going to give you the grand overview of Mine Horse Park. Looking from above. Try and get up to just about where the clouds are. That way you can have a nice overhead view. Speaking of clouds, there's one right there. Here's the band I was telling you about. That's a park. Little baseball stadium. Little football stadium. Big baseball stadium. This, that's a little hotel. That's a bar right next to the racetrack with a viewing stand of the paddock. And this is a little bit of a parking lot that I have back here for the track. Obviously, in real life, it's a lot bigger. So that's pretty much all I have for you in regards to the racetrack. Let's finish up the video doing a starting gate demonstration or tutorial. Let's just go right in the middle here. We'll pretend we're doing it on the turf course. So here's what you need. Pick whatever color you want, whatever type of wood you want. You need fence. You need fence gates. You need redstone you need a redstone repeater and you need a lever I believe that's all you need so the starting gates that I built only go up to about four horses uh, excuse me five horses so here's what you're gonna start with just start at the end put a fence down Build it a couple of blocks back. Now you're going to build the front of the gate. So pretend that the horses are running this way. Use only fence gates. Only. You, I know it's tempting to put a fence gate and then put a thing here. And then put another fence gate. Then put regular fence there. Just put all fence gates. Otherwise the horses are not going to be able to come out. So do it just like this. You're going to need two fence gates for every stall. And you're going to see why. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then leave one of them. You need room for the horses to go in. So leave two blocks of space here. Oh man, the right stick here on the PS4 is very sensitive to movement now with the new update. So this is where the horses would be loaded in in the back. Now we're going to build up one side of the starting gate. I would allow at least three blocks of height. So this could be the top of your gate right here. The topmost layer that I'm putting in now. So you could bring this across. Just more fence. You could use a different material if you want. This is purely about aesthetic and we'll finish that up soon but I think it's actually more important maybe I did this in a little bit of a stupid order I think it's more important to do the redstone so let's look at the redstone here you're gonna have horses spaced one block apart in other words you're gonna have your first horse here second horse here third horse here so the blocks in which there's not gonna be a horse put a redstone repeater just leave one block of space in between now take your redstone Do one line of redstone behind the repeaters and one coming up in between each. Just 
finish this up back here. Now, you need to leave a block of space here for the redstone to come out. Just need to connect that. So there's your setup. Horses, again, are going to be going this way. You could finish the top. And we could put the end of the gate right here. Now, if you trust that nobody's going to climb on top of each other, you can just leave it like this, load the horses in, and I think that should work. Let's see. Nope, it doesn't work. Let me see what I did wrong here. Is it that I have to hit that? No. Okay. Well, I'm obviously doing something wrong here. Let's go take a look at one of my other starting gates. We'll use this one, for example. This one should work. Okay. So I had two redstone repeaters here. I don't think it matters, actually. So this, this starting gate has... The button all the way up at the front. Actually, I think I placed them. Did I place them in the wrong direction? Very well, could have. Let's find out. Yes, they're on the wrong side. So they should be facing that way. Have the buttons at the front. The way the horses are breaking out of the gate. So now let's see if that works. Yep, that works. Okay. Now, now that we have that settled, keep the buttons toward the front of the gate, unlike I just did. If you want to create separation between the horses, go to where you have the redstone repeaters between each horse and bring the fence down. I'm not going to do this all over again but I'm just gonna show you one you saw the other starting gate just a minute ago so that's how you create separation between your horses just bring the fence down just give you one more example bring the fence down here and then bring it down there so just all fence gates in the front all fence gates in the back And then you can use the fence, regular fence, to do the outline of the thing and to separate the horses. So you have your last redstone repeater here. I don't think it matters in which direction, but you can have the buttons toward the back for this one, as we just proved it works. Bring a fence down here, that way nobody cheats the system and goes to the side. And whoever's in the first stall on their horse this is close enough because I've done it before myself you hit the lever and the gates open providing a fair start for the entire field and they're off so that'll pretty much do it everybody uh, let me just tell you if you want you can add signs to the starting gate if you want so this would be where the for first horse is so you could do number one skip one because of the redstone repeater and the fence number two and so on I'm not gonna keep going and you can put the name of your racetrack up here if you want just like I did I think I also put things like naira.com and nairabets.com yep so, this would be what my finished product looks like. I just gave you a basic tutorial over there. But this is what you should end up with in the end if you want to do it the same way as me. Redstone is very simple. There's nothing complicated going on here. I'm an idiot. I have no idea how to use redstone pretty much besides this. 
and very very simple circuits but it's not the most important thing here so ladies and gentlemen that is it thank you so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed it this is a rare exception normally I don't do gaming videos anymore but I felt that this was a good time because of the request I got for dimensions of the racetrack and that pretty much every racetrack video I did before this as far as a tour was bad try to do a better one this time hope you guys all enjoyed again this coming week Wednesday Breeders Cup preview talking about the Breeders Cup distaff the Breeders Cup turf and the Breeders Cup classic with Sammy and Jack Sargent of the Racing Rundown podcast thanks for watching everybody Hope to see you again soon. If you play the horses, remember, pay your bills first and enjoy yourself.